A marine platoon is in uncharted territory. Their mission has taken an unexpected turn and they now find themselves in unfamiliar surroundings. It's not clear where they are, but as they'll soon find out, it's not a question of where, it's a question of when. Because coming over the hill is a massive group of soldiers wearing armor and carrying shields and spears. No, it's not a team of historical reenactors, it's a Roman legion, all 5,200 of them, and they look ready to fight. Who would win if a modern-day marine platoon went head-to-head -head with an entire Roman legion? Let's look at the tail of the tape. In terms of size, it's really not a competition. Marine platoons are made up of combat infantry meant to take and hold enemy objectives. They're highly trained and are used for both close quarters and ranged assaults. You'll usually find a team of 43 soldiers led by a platoon commander, usually a second lieutenant. He'll be backed up by two or three sergeants, a platoon guide directing the march, a messenger who delivers key intel, and three weapon squads who are here to deal out the punishment. For the Marines, it's about quality, not quantity. And for the Roman Legion, it's the exact opposite. If you looked at this battle from the air, it might look like a little baby lion running from a herd of wildebeest. We're still kind of sad about that scene. The Roman Legion is big, really big, a massive unit consisting of over 5,000 Roman soldiers. The vast majority of its forces are foot soldiers. They're backed up by several hundred cavalry soldiers who generally ride on horseback. During the latter days of the Roman Empire, it was common for them to be backed up by several hundred auxilia soldiers, often foreign mercenaries who joined the Legion for pay. The primary goal of this army was to create an impression of overwhelming force, occupying regions and fending off invading armies. In those days, Rome could win many battles with sheer force of numbers. But times have changed. So, in numbers, the Marines are outmatched. But it's not all about the numbers. Because in terms of arms, 2,000 years can change a lot. The Roman Legion was well armed for their day, but their weapons were largely meant for close-range fighting. They would typically carry a dagger on their body called a pugio that was meant for close quarters combat. A longer iron sword was usually their primary weapon varying in length. In terms of longer range weapons, the primary one was a spear. This sharp tipped tool could be used for thrusting against enemy forces or thrown in a pinch if you had good aim, that is. Of course, then you had to get it back. As for ranged weapons, the options were limited. Some soldiers carried sharp tipped lead weighted darts called plumbate, but those were only used later in the Roman Empire's history. The more common tool was a basic mechanical crossbow, which could fire arrows in rapid succession and cut down enemy soldiers before they got too close. The Roman Legion would also carry entrenching tools such as sickles and pickaxes that were primarily used to clear terrain, but could also find themselves in the head of an enemy soldier if needed. Offensive weapons were pretty basic, and so were defensive options. While not all troops wore armor, the high-level soldiers would often wear metal torso armor and helmets. This protected them from sudden attacks, but the armor often had weak points and wasn't foolproof. Still, against an army with similar equipment, it was better than nothing. Chainmail was common because it was more lightweight and maneuverable than solid armor. Horses often wore armor as well, because if the steed went down, so did the rider. But while the armor was advanced for its day, it became weaker due to cost-cutting and corruption in the later days of the empire. The Marines do not suffer such shortfalls. What the Marines lack in numbers, they make up for in firepower. In a big way, every member of the 43 Marines will usually be equipped with an M27 infantry automatic rifle, the basic weapon of the Corps. Holding 30 rounds at a time, it can fire a sustained 36 rounds a minute, which can travel at least 600 meters. They might be backed up by grenade launchers and mortar launchers, which each pack an explosive payload and can take out large numbers of enemies in a single go. They also might carry a handgun, a multi-purpose blade, a non-lethal weaponry like pepper spray and stun grenades for crowd control and neutralizing enemies for capture. They also carry old-fashioned bayonets that are used for cutting down brush as well as self-defense. And that's just the offensive tools. The Marines usually wear protective vests designed to protect them from shrapnel while also protecting them from most bullets. Helmets provide protection and can be equipped with visual tools like night vision goggles for better visibility. So while there are only 43 Marines compared to 5200 Roman Legionnaires, in terms of gear, it's not even close. So let the battle begin! The Marines quickly raise their weapons prepared for action against these strange, crudely armed warriors. The Roman Legion reacts just as quickly, raising their spears and issuing demands for surrender. Uh-oh, does anyone speak Latin? Probably not. Soon the combat is on and it's going to be a slaughter one way or another. Is there any way for the Roman Legion to win? It's possible, but not easy. The Marines aren't used to close quarters combat on this level, and while they have no shortage of effective tools, they could become overwhelmed by sheer numbers. 
They do have one big disadvantage. Each Marine is a large percentage of their manpower and firepower. If the combat begins in a close quarter scenario and several go down right away, it becomes much harder for the survivors to fend off the much bigger army. That means they'll go down one by one and be forced to retreat, and the few survivors will still be up against a massive force, even if they've whittled it down significantly, at which point it just becomes a game of attrition. But that's the worst case scenario for the Marines, and it's not particularly likely. Each Marine's battle rifle can reach out over 600 meters and put the hurt on somebody, giving the modern-day warriors a massive advantage over their Iron Age attackers. The Roman Legion is also being courteous by giving the Marines a single solid wall of shields and men to shoot at, and not even the sturdiest Roman shield is going to stand up to the kinetic energy of a 5.56mm round. Dozens of Romans will be dead within seconds of the advance starting toward the Marine position, but there's a whole lot more Romans than there are Marines, which is why the Marine platoon has brought along a few great equalizers from the future. First up is a volley of 40mm grenades from the fire team's designated grenadiers. These explosive little easter eggs have a range of 350 meters for area targets and a kill radius of 5 meters, wounding out to 15. Each platoon will have at least 3 to 4 of these grenadiers, typically carrying at least 18 grenades each. There's a whole lot of boom for Roman legionnaires to charge through. Up next, it depends on if we're sending a new marine platoon back in time to fight the Romans or a more classic formation. That's because in the 2020s, the Marine Corps had started experimenting with changing the traditional composition of a platoon, eliminating many positions it's had for decades, such as the dedicated machine gunners. The Marine Corps' new battle rifle allows any marine to potentially be an automatic rifleman, and the Corps decided that precision matters more than volume of fire in future conflicts. Only time will tell if this is right. However, let's go with a traditional platoon formation, as the Corps has operated with it for years. This means that the charging Romans will have to face the wrath of up to three machine guns, typically lighter weapons such as the M249. Though they could be facing the big bark and big bite of the M240, these weapons have frightful rates of fire, and a charging Roman legion is the perfect target, with the enemy soldiers lining up neatly in rows and just begging to be mowed down. With ranges in the hundreds of yards, Romans are going to be dying by the dozens before they've made any significant progress. And then there's the M3A1 MAS, or Multi-Purpose Anti-Armor Anti-Personnel Weapon System. At least one rifleman in the platoon will be carrying this bad boy, along with a small supply of rockets. In the anti-personnel role, the MAS delivers high explosives that can reach out and touch somebody up to 800 meters away, while ammo is limited. The sheer killing and wounding power of the Maz against tightly packed enemy formations is not to be understated. Unless the Romans are suicidally one-track minded about getting to the Marines, we're going to be seeing a lot of breaking and running within the first two minutes of being on the wrong end of a modern American Marine platoon's firepower. But our Marine platoon just happens to bring another gift back in time with them, an attached mortar section. Typically, mortars are attached as their own independent platoon, but this time, an entire mortar section got sucked back in time with our marines to give ancient Rome a taste of modern American firepower. Armed with M252 mortars, the high explosive rounds fired can have a kill radius of up to 115 feet. Exploding inside a densely packed Roman formation, a few rounds from each mortar will be enough to seriously level the playing field. Because after all, the Romans have the decisive numbers advantage here. But the Romans had more tricks than you might expect. Roman infantry was usually deployed in three ranks to provide backup in the event the first line was overwhelmed and to surprise an enemy with overwhelming force if they got the advantage. Their weaponry might have been basic, but their tactics definitely were not. The generals developed complex battle plans that made it easy to confuse and ambush the enemy. The first flank would often start by throwing their javelins, hoping to throw the enemy into chaos and take out some important figures before they were able to respond so the marines might wind up facing multiple waves of Roman attackers. How would that go? Well, it all depends on one question. The Romans' only chance to win is if they got the jump on the marines to take out the core of their platoon, skewing the odds heavily in their favor. Even with their full numbers, the marines are facing bad odds in terms of numbers. To defeat an entire Roman legion, these elite soldiers will have to take out approximately 121 soldiers each. That sounds impossible, but the difference in equipment is a real game changer here. The Romans have few ranged weapons, and their armor was not designed to sustain a hit from a high-caliber bullet and automatic rifles. Meanwhile, the Marines' body armor was designed to protect from things far more powerful than arrows and javelins. But quantity is a quality all its own. Do the Marines have enough bullets to take on 5,200 troops at once? 
The average soldier in the Army, Air Force, and Marines carries seven 30-round magazines for their rifle. That's 210 bullets per soldier. Multiplied by 43, we've got a total arsenal of over 8,600 bullets, which means the platoon literally has a bullet for every man in the Roman Legion. But anyone who's played a shooting game knows that every bullet doesn't always go where it's intended. The odds are there will be a lot of misfires and maybe even a little panic when the shooting begins. Some ammo is going to be wasted, but the military has a cushion of over 3,000 bullets. Odds are the Roman Legion is going to be mostly wiped out by the time the Marine platoon's ammo is expended. But close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Let's say that these Marines aren't quite on their game today. After all, traveling in time to fight an ancient army can be stressful. So they're out of ammo for their M27s and they've only wiped out about 90% of the Roman Legion. Now there are around 500 pissed off Romans coming to avenge their countrymen and the battlefield got a lot more even. The Marines do carry pistols as well, the Sig Sauer M17, and this gives them several hundred new shots against their enemy. However, these guns aren't quite as high-powered and cannot be used at long ranges, so odds are they won't do quite as much damage. Still, Marines could be able to take out several hundred more Legionnaires as they approach, although they may start taking some losses of their own from flying arrows and javelins at close range. We're close to the end now, but can the Marines finish the job? The final battle might come down to close-range combat, as the out-of-ammo marines fall back on their non-lethal weaponry and blades to eliminate the small remaining group of Roman Legion soldiers. One by one, this would be an even match, and the Romans may even have the edge. After all, they're used to fighting with swords and other blades, while the marines primarily fight with ranged weapons. But there's one factor that will shift the tide, the marines' tear gas supply. The Marines slip on their protective eyewear, throw a few grenades, and the Romans suddenly find themselves covered in painful gas that makes it nearly impossible to see. And that's when the Marines come and finish the job in a way the Romans are all too familiar with, a bayonet in hand. In the end, the Roman Legion is a powerful fighting force that gave the Marines a tough fight, but no matter the numbers advantage, they simply don't have an answer for the superior firepower and multiple combat tactics of a U.S. Marine platoon. Semper Fidelis Want to know more about this ancient fighting force? Check out Most Hardcore Soldier Roman Legionnaire, or watch this video instead.